this shortened version you're all about to get. <clears throat> um recording okay so cellular respiration is how the body or any animal how we take energy from our food and turn it into atp so that's what it is turn food into atp ATP is the energy currency for the body. If you remember that, it's the uh, so let me go on the board a little bit. All right. Uh Let's see if black works. Oh, it works. If you remember, ATP is it's ADP and then that and then that P. So ADP plus P. And if you can't hear me or you can't see. Just unmute yourself and say something because I probably won't be able to see the um, I won't be able to see the chat. Um, so it's ADP plus P. When you break up ATP, what kind of reaction is that? You're breaking something up. You can just say it to yourself. I hope you said catabolic. When we join those two together, we're going to take the P, the phosphorus, and join it to the ADP. That's going to give us ATP. So I'm taking two smaller molecules and I'm putting them together. I'm taking a phosphate group and I'm sticking it onto ADP. That's going to, um, that's, that's anabolic, right? And so to do that, I need energy. I need energy to put these two together. So where am I going to get the energy to do that? The answer is from your food. <clears throat> the energy from our food is going to be used to put these two together. And so when we're talking about food, what is it? Like where, what's the energy sources in our food? If you can think of it before I start writing it down, what are the energy sources in our food? There's, there's protein? really three, practically speaking, there's three. Carbohydrates, lipids, those are the main two. Proteins. Carbs, lipids, and proteins. That is where we get the energy in our food. So our body is going to process these. Proteins, only about 10%. You don't have to write this down, but only about 10% of proteins are used for energy. And the rest of it is used to make stuff. Remember, protein is used to make all those things in your body. So really, we're really talking about carbs and lipids. Carbohydrates and lipids. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just take carbohydrates and we're going to use that because that one's the hardest. That's the, not the hardest. It takes the most uh, processing by our body, carbohydrates. So if we know how carbohydrates are used by the cell, then we can, we can know how lipids are used and, and proteins, right? That's, that's easier. So we don't have to talk about lipids and proteins 
if we do carbohydrates. So <clears throat> we're going to use the example of glucose. Glucose is going to represent food. So we're going to take glucose, we're going to take the energy from glucose, and we're going to put ADP and P together. That's an anabolic reaction. Right, so we're always making ATP, we're always breaking up ATP. Let me shut off my email. <clears throat> so, we're going to use glucose. So here's like the formula. Glucose. So we're gonna, the cell is going to take in glucose and oxygen. We're going to take the energy off of glucose. We're going to make ATP. It's only three letters and I spelled it wrong. Make ATP. That's what that. If you can't read it, that's what it says. So we're going to take blood sugar, glucose, then we're breathing in oxygen. We're using the energy from the glucose to make ATP, and there's a byproduct, like a waste product that's not used. That is carbon dioxide. I don't want to say that water is wasted. It's not wasted, right? But that, as far as the cell's concerned, it's not using it. It's like the byproduct of this. So I'm going to write glucose in a different way. Glucose, if you remember, and if you didn't, you should know this if you're going into medical something. Is there a way you can make the whiteboard bigger? Make the whiteboard bigger, yes. Like on the screen? Right now, are you just seeing like a little me? Is yeah. You oh, have yeah. pin it. That messes it all up. Okay, hold on. I think I can pin it. Press the little pin thing. What about now? There, yes, perfect. Ah. Thank you. Ah, how are you even? Okay. This is so like old people thing to do, huh? Take your laptop and just like, you know, there's like technology that does all of this. I could use the whiteboard. Well, I could use the, the thing that we have and I can record off of it. Or I could use the whiteboard feature on, the, on my own computer, right? But I'm just such an old person thing to do. You know, I don't know if you ever noticed, but we have like a, um, transparency thing in the corner. I forgot what you call it now. You probably never even seen one. Like you just take those transparencies and you put it on top. Now your math teacher probably used it. I should break that thing out. I've got some of those. Anyway, look, that's the formula. I'm going to write this in a different way. Glucose is C6H12O6. Instead of writing that, I'm just going to write it as CH2O, because that's what carbohydrates are. It's, 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 it's water plus carbon, carbohydrate, right? So this represents the sugar. This represents oxygen. That represents carbon dioxide, and that's water. If you look at both sides of this equation, they balance, right? So there's oxygen. There's oxygen, and then you can look here. Here's CH2O. So you're just taking sugar and oxygen, and it's like getting rearranged, and then here's the carbon dioxide and water, right? So really what it comes down to is that the carbon, the carbon that's in the food that we eat, is the same carbon that we end up breathing out every time we breathe out. We're breathing out that carbon atom that we were eating.
And you can see oxygen is the one that goes in there. Oxygen is going in, grabbing that carbon, and then you're breathing it out. So that's kind of the, now you might look in the book and it'll say C6H12O6 plus 6O2. I just made it as simple as you as I could just so you can kind of get that gist of what's going on, right? So we're taking energy from our food. We're adding oxygen that you breathe in. We're going to make ATP with that. What's the byproducts, the products that we aren't going to use? Carbon dioxide, breathe that out. Water, pee that out. So this chapter is all about making ATP, which is an anabolic process. So we need energy to make it. So, and then um, Wednesday, maybe Wednesday, uh, we're going to get to photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the opposite. It's going that way. The plant is going to use carbon dioxide from the air. It's going to use water that you, that's from the roots, and it's going to make sugar with it. And it's breathing out oxygen. So photosynthesis is the reverse process of this. But that's like Okay, so there's three steps. There's three, well, I'm breaking it down into three parts. The first part is called Glycolysis. Glyco, glyco meaning sugar, and then here we have this word again, lysis. That word's come up a couple of times in class. Glycolysis, glyco meaning sugar, lysis meaning break. So this is the stage where we're breaking up sugar. Does that say reproduction? What's that? The top cell. Is this part of this? No, what's that word? Glycolysis? No. After cell. It's, res it's respiration, cell respiration. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're welcome. You're probably totally regretting asking. Does that look like a P? It does, doesn't it? Yeah, that's supposed to be an arm. I know that totally makes you regret asking a question, huh? So you got this word. This one's, this one has a couple names. It's called the citric acid cycle, the TCA cycle, the Krebs cycle. I'm calling it Krebs, K-R-E-B-S, because I always default to the word with the smallest number of letters, the shortest word. So citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle, that's the main two things. And then we have the third stage. So there's three stages we're going to discuss. Third stage, although it's called a few things like chemiosmosis and uh, uh, oxidative phosphorylation, we're going to call it the electron transport chain. Electron. I have to get in front of it. <clears throat> I am going to pull the PowerPoint back up. I'm just writing some stuff on the board. So Krebs uh, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. Those are the three stages we're going to talk about. The, the glycolysis happens in the cytosol. 
or we could say cytoplasm. So what happens in the liquid part of the cell. The other two are both going to happen in the mitochondria. So Krebs cycle, electron transport chain happen in the mitochondria. Glycolysis, is that reading backwards for you guys? Or is it reading normal? The big one is backwards. I mean like all the it's letters, backwards. all the letters like you're looking in a mirror? Yes. Is that for everybody or is anyone reading it normal? I'm it's like reading that for me too, backwards. Reading okay. it backwards on the one, it's normal on one. What's normal for me? So all of this that you're looking at now is because like I'm looking at it and it looks like like I'm looking at it on the computer and it looks like it's like I'd have to hold a mirror up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that it's working for that it's like reading normal? It's reading normal for me. Okay, so what did she do that other people didn't do? I pinned it. Oh uh, yeah, I think you're right. Try pinning me, guys. Like go to the go to go to the screen, and that pin will pop up. Oh, I did. It's still backwards for me for some reason. Even when you pin me. Yeah. Like I'll unpin you and pin you, and still. How do I pin you? If you go on this, like hover your, your mouse over this, your cursor over the screen and you'll see like that thing come up in the middle, I think. Yeah, no, that just made you go away. Okay. All right, I hope the recording shows up. Correct. I'm going to switch over to PowerPoint in a minute, so I don't think it's going to matter. Um, but I just noticed it myself. All right. I'm going to have to use a lot of your imagination there. So, <clears throat> um, so we're going to talk about these three steps. Um, actually, let me just switch to the, um, let me switch right now to the PowerPoint. Are you guys still seeing me or are you seeing the PowerPoint? PowerPoint. Good. Okay, so this was the first thing I was saying that like, um, you know, you take or here they're putting organic molecules. Just look at the bottom half of this organic molecules. That is the glucose glucose. Plus H2, I mean, plus uh, oxygen. Then you make ATP and the byproduct is carbon dioxide and water, right? This upper half we're going to talk about in another class. So. This is cellular respiration. Uh, CH2O plus O2. And then there's the products. This is what I was writing three stages, right? Glycolysis, stage one, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. That's all we're calling it. So glycolysis happens outside of the cell. It happens in the cytosol or cytoplasm, other, in other words, the liquid. Krebs cycle is going to happen in the mitochondria. Oxidative, I mean, uh, electron transport chain is going to happen in the mitochondria. Mitochondria, mitochondrion, mitochondrion is one, mitochondria is many, so it doesn't matter. It's just, I'm using the plural word. But that's what I'd written on the board. So we're going to go over each of these steps. So we're going to do glycolysis first. So 
it's already telling you here kind of the point of glycolysis to turn glucose into pyruvate. So pyruvate is kind of a half of a glucose molecule. I'm going to show you. Can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. Yeah. The purpose of glycolysis is to turn glucose into pyruvate. And that's what's like written here. Usually when we, when we measure molecules, we look at the number of carbons, right? So like glucose is a six carbon molecule. That's how kind of how we can know how big it is, right? Pyruvate is three, it's a three carbon molecule. <clears throat> Actually, I'll show it to you. This is what, this is half of glycolysis. We don't have to know this, but if you are unlucky enough to take um, organic chemistry, this is a possibility you'll, you're gonna have to know all the steps with all the enzymes. But um, we have glucose. So this is, I, there's two slides, right? This one and this one. So I'm just gonna make this easier. Glucose, if we count the number of carbons, and it's written really weird up here, right? So how we do it is like each time this line bends, well, first of all, this is a hexagon, right? So that means six carbons, right? Every time the line bends, that's a carbon. That's, that's how you read these things. Um, so there's six, it's a six carbon molecule. So we're just saying we're calling it a six carbon molecule because we're trying to keep track of how big or how small it is. <clears throat> it's the only reason I'm saying it that way. If you look at it over here, this molecule, instead of calling it glyceraldehyde three phosphate, we're gonna we could call it G3P. That's acceptable because that's that's what people do. So we're starting with glucose and then your body is through is, is going to start changing it and start breaking it down and you end up with two three carbon molecules two molecules of glyceraldehyde or a g3p so you go from one glucose to two molecules of g3p you see there's the car the three carbons so they're half as big. All that's going to happen on this second slide is we're changing around. Like, all right, look at pyruvate, and then you look at this other thing. We're changing around the oxygens and the hydrogens. It's the same size molecule. We just, and, and that's not even important for like the test or anything. I'm just showing you what the molecule looks like. <clears throat> so it's getting changed around your body has to it's got to be like you know before this thing can enter the mitochondria before we can go from krebs cycle i mean from glycolysis to krebs cycle we got to make it small enough and we got to make it the right arrangement that's and that's what your body's doing that's why this thing's so long we're making it small enough and we are um changing rearranging the oxygens and hydrogen atoms to make it acceptable to go in to the next phase of the Krebs cycle. The point that you have to know is <clears throat> two things. Uh, one, we're, at the end of this, we end up with two molecules of pyruvate. So you've essentially broken one glucose molecule into two pyruvate molecules. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that we're going to get some, um, we're going to get some um, ATP out of this because this is a catabolic reaction. You've taken one glucose and you've broken it in half. So that's catabolic. So whenever you break up a molecule, you get some ATP from it. 
And that's what they wrote here. They, that's why that, that little ATP thing is there. How many ATP do you get? Um, like net, like profit, two. You get two ATP out of this. It's not like the imp impressive payout that we want. This is just like bonus ATP. We're not trying to get ATP from glycolysis. Your cells are just trying to break this thing up to make it to make it smaller. So this is like half of a blood sugar molecule, half a glucose molecule, pyruvate. You can buy it. You can go to like GNC. They sell it. It's just no reason to buy it. Half a sugar molecule. But, you know, it's a thing. All right, so questions on glycolysis, anything? So far, it's like, okay, Just breaking a sugar in half. Okay. It's not reading backwards. Good. Now we're going to go to Krebs cycle. Look, between glycolysis and Krebs cycle, so glycolysis is stage one, Krebs cycle stage two. <clears throat> this is, there's like a intermediate stage, 1.5 like right in the middle here. We got to take the pyruvate and we have to tweak it a little bit. So, um, cause the thing is, um, like the Krebs cycle will not accept a molecule that's bigger than two carbons, right? And pyruvate is three carbons, right? Pyruvate will go into the mitochondria, but it won't go into the Krebs cycle. So we turn, so we made it from six carbons into three because that's small enough to get into the mitochondria. Right, six won't make it inside. That's why we had to break it in half. But now we got to take each of those pyruvates and we got to like take away one of the carbons. So like here's pyruvate and you see how it's three carbons? Take one of the carbons off. And so really if you look, see this part here that's in it's part that I'm circling, that's carbon dioxide. That's CO2, right? So there it is. That's going to go back into your blood. You know, it's going to go from your cell into your blood to your lungs. You're going to breathe it out, right? So this is the sugar. This is the end of your sugar almost, pyruvate. It's like a half sugar. You're going to take one of the carbons off, a couple of the oxygens off, and there you go. We're going to add something called coenzyme we're going to add something called coenzyme a so the end thing is called acetyl coa so we have to convert pyruvate into acetyl coa And that's just to make it small enough to get into the Krebs cycle. Two carbons, not three. Three is too big. If you ever study nutrition, you will study some of the vitamins, like B vitamins. <clears throat> and B vitamins are all involved in this whole process that we're talking about today. For example, coenzyme A, that's one of your B vitamins. I think it's like pantothenic acid or whatever. Um, NAD. You see this thing up here, NAD, and here it says NADH. That's um, that's niacin. So to make it simple, because we didn't talk about oxidation and reduction reactions in this class, I just want you to know when you see something that's NAD or FAD, so here it's like NAD+, plus, here it's NADH, it doesn't matter the configuration. If it, as long as it's NAD, NAD, that is an electron carrier. That's all it does. It carries electrons from one place to another. That's it. When you see it, NAD, like you'll see it like here, right? Look, here's FAD, NAD, NAD. They're carrying electrons.
So before we get to the Krebs cycle, we have to turn pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. So it's acetyl-CoA that enters the Krebs cycle. Any questions? Look at the Krebs cycle. I think there's a better version though. I saw it right there. So here's the Krebs cycle. The purpose of the Krebs cycle is to get the electrons off of this acetyl-CoA. Right, and so these see these like gray circles that represents a carbon, right? We're using carbon to measure the size of the molecule. So this is the last, this is the end of your um, sugar. You ate a pancake that was starch. That starch got broken down into maltose that got broken down into glucose. The glucose went into your blood. So now the little pieces of pancake are in your blood. Then your cell took that glucose in, broke it into pyruvate. So now it's even smaller. And we broke it even smaller into acetyl-CoA. So this is the last, this is the end of the line for that pancake. Right? It's, it's been broken down, broken down, broken down. It's finally like this molecule called acetyl-CoA. The Krebs cycle is going to rip that apart and turn it into nothing, just atoms, right? So it rips this first carbon off, you breathe that out. Rips the second carbon off, you breathe it out. This is no longer sugar or anything that resembles a molecule. It's just atoms. And then the Krebs cycle comes around again, grabs another acetyl-CoA, rips it up. Comes around again, grabs another acetyl-CoA, rips it up. Comes around again. I'm stalling till I get back to my PowerPoint. Grabs another acetyl-CoA, rips it up. Comes around, okay, I'm done. So why is it ripping this acetyl-CoA up? What are we trying to get? Electrons. That's energy. Electrons are a source of energy. So we're taking the electrons off your food. So at the beginning, I said, oh, we're going to take food and take the energy from food and make ATP. So to be more precise, we're going to take the electrons off of food and make ATP. The electrons are like electricity, right? And so this is where it's happening. This is where the electrons are getting plucked off of that last bit of food that's in the Krebs cycle. We do get some ATP from this. Again, like bonus ATP. It's like this is like like profit. You get two ATP. So glycolysis gives you two molecules of ATP. Krebs cycle gives you two molecules of ATP, but that's not the point of doing this. The point is to get the electrons. And you see all these electron carriers, all these NAD, NAD plus, NADH, whatever it is, FADH2. It's, it's NAD and it's FAD. They're carrying electrons. That's all we want from the Krebs cycle is electrons. We're going to carry all those electrons over to the third stage. I'm looking at this a second. Do you need any of this? No. But if we were, if we are to follow this, look about 11 o'clock. This is called uh, oxaloacetate. It's got four carbons. It's going to pick up this acetyl-CoA, which is two carbons. So four carbons, picks up the two carbons, now it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you follow it along, it becomes five carbons, then four carbons, and then it picks up another two. Then it's six, 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 five, four, picks up another two. 
And you see here, carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide's here also. So it's ripping the carbon off, adding the oxygen to it. That goes out of your body, right? This CO2, you're going to breathe it out. That CO2, you're going to breathe it out. Where did it come from? It came from acetyl-CoA. So again, the carbon dioxide you're breathing out is literally from your food. But this is an easier way to put it. So we're taking electrons. What do we get from Krebs cycle? Two things. Electrons, that's the main thing. Then two molecules of bonus ATP. <clears throat> and I'm talking about like profit. You know, because you got to put some ATP into the Krebs cycle to get the Krebs cycle working, and you're going to get some ATP out of it. I'm talking about like, what are you getting net? Like, what's your net profit? Two ATP. But we want to take these electrons over to the last stage, which is the electron transport chain. Questions? Where is this happening? Where is this Krebs cycle? Where are we right now? You can say it to yourself. We're in the mitochondria. We're inside the mitochondria. And this last phase is also inside the mitochondria. Look, here's, here's the mitochondria. Probably some really good videos on this. If you look up, I think uh, if you call it electron transport chain, you should be able to find it. But look at this. Um, all right, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write on the board a little bit. But it's not going to be backwards because it's not going to be any letters. But I want to talk about the electron transport chain. Let me erase all this. I suck at drawing, obviously, but I'm trying to, that's supposed to be the mitochondria. That's supposed to be, well, whatever. I'm trying to draw, trying to draw this thing. That's what I'm trying to draw on the board. You see how it's like dark, like a, I don't know, a brown versus like a yellow. Anyway. That's what I'm trying to draw up here. So that's the mitochondria inside the cell. <laughs> Mine's so much better. It's got like these two membranes, right? <clears throat> and um, so this is in your cell. This is one of the organelles in your cell. There are atoms of um, there's atoms of hydrogen. Ions, H plus. Hydrogen ions are, we call them protons, right? Because that's all hydrogens are. They're, um, they're electrons and they're protons. These are missing their electrons. That's why I've got the plus next to it. So we call those protons. I'm going to put a bunch of dots in here, right? Probably going to do it in purple. So these dots. I'm not going to do it like everywhere, but there's dots on the in, on on this inner membrane, and then there's also hydrogen ions out here too. Yeah. Right? I don't even know if you can see that, but you get the idea. We'll see it. So there's. 
These represent protons, these dots, right? So there's protons in that inner membrane and there's protons in that outer membrane and they follow the, the law of diffusion, right? So they're gonna spread out. So they're not, they're not concentrated on the inside and they're not concentrated on the outside. And see this black line here? That's a, um, it's like a plasma membrane. It's, it's, it's a phospholipid, just like our cell membranes. So it allows things to go in and out. Some people think that this mitochondria is um, like the oldest organ. I'm not going to, anyway. Turns out that this has DNA too. Like we didn't really know that until a couple decades ago. You know, it's a, it's a really interesting really interesting find but anyway there's something different about the mitochondria out of all the organelles that we went over in class the mitochondria is kind of different from all the other ones but anyway there's hydrogen ions here right and so I'm gonna take this, these black lines here and I'm gonna draw it a little bit larger Right, so all this is is a phospholipid bilayer. So when we draw it, we kind of draw it like this. Oh, you know, I can't draw, that's gonna take me forever. Now I'm kind of committed. All right, so that represents these lines. We can't see what you wrote like right below the, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so that, this is like a cell membrane or this also, this is the same material. This is phospholipid, one layer of phospholipid, another layer of phospholipid. And there's like dots on one side of it and there's dots on the other side of it. And they're, they're like equal. However many, however many protons are up here, there's that many protons down there. And then embedded in here are like these pumps, like these proteins that just like pump, I don't know, I'm just drawing them like that. And they, they're, they're pumps for, for these protons. They allow these protons to go like this way or to go that way. So I'm gonna try, draw, I'm gonna draw it like that. You know, there's like all these pumps that are built in to the membrane. And so what your body's gonna do, it's gonna turn these pumps on and it's gonna pump all of the protons to one side. So now all the protons, you see like none of them are in the inside they've all been pumped on the outside. So it would be like this pump's gonna turn on and it's gonna pump everything onto one side. And since, and, and that's, that, that's active transport. And since that's a pump, we need some kind of electricity or some kind of power source to run this pump. If we're gonna turn all these pumps on, to pump out all the protons, we need to get some kind of energy to turn the pumps on. That's where the electrons come in. The electrons that we got from prep cycle, they're turning all these purple pumps on and they're pumping all the protons to one side and not the other. That's not the end of the story. They want to come back in. They want to diffuse. They've been pumped out. Half of them want to go back in. So fine, they can come back in, but you all are going to come back in through here. Come in right there. You can come back in. Half of you guys can come back in, but you got to come in through here. And that's like, so like if we go back to the PowerPoint, which might be a better way of talking about it. 
that's these pumps. The electrons are turning these pumps on and they're pumping all the protons from here, from the yellow part into the orange part. So there's pumps all in these black lines, right? All in this membrane. This black, these black lines are like this phospholipid bilayer. So we're pumping them all into the orange. You can come back, but you're only coming back through this place right here. And that's like this. It's like a, it's like a water mill, right? It turns the wheel and that's what is going to put the ADP and the P back together. That might be kind of difficult to understand, but um, that's what's happening. So we got all the electrons from, from the Krebs cycle. We got to turn these pumps on with the electrons. These pumps are going to shift the balance. Let's say that there's like 100 protons in this darker side and there's 100 protons in this lighter side. You're going to take all 100 protons here, and you're going to pump them into here. So now we've got 200 protons here, and we've got zero here. And diffusion dictates that they've got to flow back until they're 100 on each side, because that's what diffusion does, right? So 100 of them are going to flow right back through, but they're going to flow right here. And that's like water turning like a mill or a turbine or something, right? That's going to give power to the ATP factory to put ADP and P together. So that's what they're showing you here. ADP is hanging around. P, the other phosphate, is hanging around. Just how do we put them together? We need energy to put them together. That's what these protons do. As they come through, that that like turning the wheel that gives it the energy to put these two together to make ATP. That's what this is kind of showing. We pushed all the protons onto one side. They're not showing you the pumps, but there's a bunch of pumps in here. All right, come back through, and that's going to turn this thing and that's going to be able to put the ADP and the P back together to make ATP. And how many ATP do we get from this? About 34. So this is the payoff. This is the big payoff. We're making 34 ATP with the energy from a glucose molecule. In fact, if we add our like our lanyap, like our extra ATP that we gotten from like the other two phases, we end up with like 38 ATP total. I wonder if I could play a video on here. Not my video, like a real one. Let me just... Uh, maybe I can't. I'll post a couple. I'm not going to even try because I don't think it's going to play. Um, but that's the third. That's the third stage. Let me get off of me. That's the third stage. So we took all the electrons from this. We turned these pumps on. Pushed all the protons to one side, they came through, and that put the ADP plus the P together to make ATP. So really, it's a if we're it's a transfer of energy. This represents the first law of thermodynamics. Energy is not created, energy is not destroyed. It's transferred. So the energy that you that's in the ATP used to be in the P. Well, how did we get these two together? Well, the 
all the protons coming through here. That's what did it. That was the energy. How did we get all these protons onto one side? Well, we took the electrons and we turned on all of these pumps. Where did we get the electrons from? They used to be on your acetyl-CoA, the Krebs cycle. They were inside this acetyl-CoA, and that used to be pyruvate. Pyruvate used to be glucose. Glucose used to be your pancake. Pancake used to be a kernel of wheat. And then if we want to keep going back, that's, um, that's photo, photosynthesis. But as far as we're concerned in like biology, this is the end of the line for the energy because now I'm going to take this molecule of ATP and I'm going to do stuff with it. If you want to make hormones, if you want to grow hair, if you want to move your muscles, if you want to produce antibodies, you need ATP for, for everything you do. All right. You might have been with me until we got to this part, and then you might have given up at that point. You're like, whatever. Probably started trying to write down notes, and then you're like, ah. And you're thinking in your head, what's he going to ask about this? What's he going to ask about that on the test? We're going to go over this, well, the whole thing again. In particular this and of course i did make a very boring video if you watch any of my other videos this one's even like worse than the other ones because it was one of the first ones i made so it's, it's it's extra don't watch it at night um this is kind of a summation here we're getting two atp from from glycolysis we're getting two atp from krebs cycle we're getting 34 ATP from the electron transport chain. Don't worry about all these other things. Although you need to know that like when you see NAD or FAD, they're electron carriers, right? Now it's telling you that they're vitamins, right? NAD is um, niacin, in case you ever heard of that. FAD is riboflavin, if you have ever heard of that vitamin. But that's what all these B vitamins do. They, they help us use energy. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat what you just said? The word and the words. Can you spell them? Because I can. Glycolysis, you mean? No, just the uh, N D. I mean, in N A D and the uh, F A D. I mean, I won't. I won't ask you on the. I'm not going to ask you on the test like what vitamins these are. Oh, never mind. That's, that's, that's for nutrition. I was just, I keep thinking in my head that if I say something that, that you might know before that you would be interested, <laughs> that you'll be interested. And I totally know you're not. I, I just thought maybe you heard the word niacin and maybe something would like perk up in you and you'd be like, oh, that's something interesting. But I know it's not. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I try to get you interested. I'm like, look, it's on a cereal box. Do you eat Crave cereal? Look on the back. You'll see niacin, riboflavin. That's what this is. Crave. It's delicious. All right. But I know at the end of the day, this is like dry stuff. Um, but that's what it is. I mean, that's we're, we're that's making. Um, oh wait, here's something that you might. Okay, look, this one. <clears throat> okay. We had like three stages, right? Um, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, right? So this is step like 1.5, going from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. That's as long as you have oxygen. So this, this step here, right here. You can go from this molecule to this molecule as long as you have oxygen available, as long as it's aerobic. Aerobic meaning you've got enough oxygen. 
once it's anaerobic, if you don't have oxygen, you're gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna ferment this pyruvate. You're not gonna turn it into acetyl CoA, and you're not gonna turn it into electrons and whatever, right? It, you you stop right there. Pyruvate never gets turned into acetyl CoA if there's no oxygen available. And you're like, well, why would there be no oxygen available? Is it because I'm drowning at the bottom of a pool? It's not like that. It's like when you're working out and you can't get enough oxygen to your muscle. It's like, think about like when you're working out or you're on like a treadmill or you're running up stairs, your leg muscles are doing this whole cellular respiration thing. It's like an overtime. It's like breaking up sugar, breaking up sugar, breaking up sugar, trying to make ATP to power the muscle because you keep running up flights of stairs. Right, or you keep lifting weights or whatever you're doing. So because the oxygen can't reach your legs or your arms fast enough, you you ferment it and you make lactate. And actually the better name for lactate is lactic acid. So that's that's what you're like while you're feeling the burn. You're you're feeling lactic acid build up in your muscle because you can't get oxygen fast enough. See, now, now you can be interesting at the gym. Just find some like random person and just start saying, well, you know why you're feeling the, you know why you're screaming? Well, tell them the real reason why they're screaming. You're screaming because it's all about your ego. Because everything's got to be about you. Look at me in the gym. Uh, uh, I'm here, everyone. Look at me. Uh. All right, sorry. But the other reason that you're hurting, you could tell them, not that they'll care, because they're not converting pyruvate over into, they're not finishing and making ATP. They're just fermenting that sugar because they're not breathing enough. And then, you know, of course, once you stop, then the oxygen quickly gets to your muscle and then that burn goes away. That's how they make alcohol. That might make you that might make you more of an interesting person. You could say, look, you want to know how this alcohol is made? And that's all yeast is doing, right? You take like sugar and yeast and you make it airtight. And the yeast, the yeast does the same thing we do. Yeast eats sugar and breathes in oxygen and breathes out carbon dioxide, just like we do. Right, so what you're doing is you're shutting off their oxygen supply and they ferment it. Instead of lactic acid, they make alcohol with it. So I have a question about um, electron transport chain. Yes. The definition of that in simple terms, is it just moving electrons from one place to the other? Sure. Will I fail putting that on a test? Yeah, I wouldn't ask it like that. Look, because it's really like when you're looking at it, it's really um, there's really many parts to it, right? And more more parts that are on than we have on this slide. It's just that I'm trying to make it simple. So it's we're gonna like make up a definition. It's using the electrons. It's like many sentences. It's, yeah, it's using the electrons to power proton pumps. We'll leave it at that. That's what all these purple blobs are. They're proton pumps. These H pluses are protons. We're pumping the protons. So it's using the electrons to power the proton pumps? Yes. Okay. And to use another important word, um, we're creating a gradient, a proton gradient. That's what this is called. When we put all the protons on one side and we don't have them on the other side, we've created a proton gradient. Just like when you've dammed up water, right? You have all the water on one side of the dam and hardly any of it is on the other side, you've created like a water gradient. You put it all on one side, right? And that water wants to leave the dam and flow in the river. 
we've kind of done that. We've, we've kind of like created this proton gradient and it wants to flow. It wants to leave where it is. You know, it doesn't, they don't all want to be trapped in the orange. It's too crowded. And I'm not going to test you on this, but this is just kind of showing you where different molecules enter this. So we got these three stages, glycolysis, stage one, acetyl-CoA, stage 1.5, Krebs cycle, stage two, electron transport chain, stage three. Here's our three sources of energy that we get from food. Right, the butter that I put on the pancakes, that's fats. Pancakes are, you know, the, the syrup is sugar and the pancake is um, whatever, starch, right? And then the proteins would be like the eggs or the bacon, right? So that's all food, right? And, and but how we process them is a little different, right? So you look at the, at the like egg whites, they don't even go through glycolysis. I mean, they could just drop in right at the end. Or sometimes they just drop in right into, right into acetyl-CoA. So proteins can sometimes go in at different spots. Like, look, sometimes proteins can drop right into the Krebs cycle, and they could avoid all the stuff before that. This is just showing you, right? But the most, compl the most complex part is like carbs. Your cells got to run those through an extra step. So once you know glycolysis, you kind of, I mean, once you know what happens to glucose, you know what happens to the rest of your food. All right. You ever been on a keto diet? You thought about a keto diet. Um, like, how can you just eat protein? Like, where, if you're not eating carbs, where are you going to get carbs from? Because you're just eating protein and fat. So, <clears throat> like, your brain needs carbohydrates, right? So where are you going to get blood glucose from? Um, you can get it from fats. So if you look at fats, you see how there's, like, two different things? There's fatty acids. That's definitely not sugar. But there's glycerol. You could take the glycerol and you can kind of like, you know, see how here it's treating it like a sugar. It's that part of the, that part of the fat is entering glycolysis because it's like a sugar. Glycerol is like a sugar. So you could take glycerol and that's kind of the thing behind the keto diet. Well, we, I'm not storing any of the fat in my stomach. I keep breaking it up because I'm trying to make sugar. So I won't hold it together and store it. I keep breaking it up. That's, the, that's part of the idea behind it. Or same thing with proteins, right? Some of the proteins are going to get turned into sugar. Because I'm not eating sugar, so now I've got to get it from somewhere. <clears throat> anyway. At the end of the day, it's you can't eat a whole bunch of food. That's really what it comes down to. And you got to go get in the gym and do like what those dudes do <clears throat> and make a bunch of noise. It's all about us, isn't it? Go watch a tennis game sometime. You know, they're hitting that little tennis ball and they're making noises like they've been shot. <clears throat> it's like it's a fucking tennis ball. Like, is it made out of lead? I mean, what's... What's up? Why are you being so noisy? It's tennis. It's not football. <laughs> it's not football. You didn't do like a flip over a bunch of dudes into the end zone. You could make noise then if you want. All right. You want to, let's see, what are our options here? One option is just to end class now and let you kind of like ferment this. Another option is to do it again. But I'm kind of feeling like if I go over this again, it's not going to help you. I could just like answer questions. Let me stop recording that I'm going to do. I'm going to stop recording. <clears throat>